Good morning, everybody. Please stand and sing with us if you're able.
stories of what they think your life, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased, and I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. Searching for answers far and wide, but I know that we're all searching for answers. Only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To the world. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To the world. speak peace so unexplainable I can hardly think and you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still it's love 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 you're good good father it's who you are who you are, to who you are, when I'm loved by you, to who I am, to who I am, to who I am, you're a good, good father, to who you are, to who you are, to who you are, and I'm loved by you, to who I am, to who I am. Good morning. We invite you to greet your neighbor as you find your seat. Good morning, one and all. We're glad that you're here. Welcome to Grace United Methodist Church. Uh, my name is Drew, and I'm one of the pastors here. Pastor Jessica is with our youth on their mission trip in West Virginia. And so we invite you to please keep them in your prayers. Uh, but we are glad that you're here, especially if it's your first time worshiping with us. We are glad that you were led to grace and we hope that today is a blessing. Welcome also to everybody who's worshiping online. We wanna invite you to fill out a connect card. So there in the pew, there should be a little piece of paper that you can fill out. Or if you grab the order of worship, you can scan the QR code that says connect with us. If you're worshiping online, you can do that by clicking the link that's nearby. Uh, as you're filling that out, right off the bat, I want to mention a few things that are relevant to your Connect card. Uh, so today's a little bit different. I've got a couple things to mention as you're filling out your Connect card. The first is that we are trying to reintroduce an acolyting ministry for children and youth here at Grace uh, to bring that back in the fall. And what we wanted to ask you is if you are an adult that would like to help design and coordinate that, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you had an experience of acolyting when you were a kid or, that, or you would like to help make this happen, uh, we want to invite you to write the word acolyte on your Connect card in the feedback or the comment section. 
uh, and it's a little tricky to spell, so I'll spell it for you. A-C-O-L-Y-T-E. Uh, having a coordinator to help coordinate all the youth and children that will be a part of this ministry is really going to help it be successful. So we're asking now, if you'd like to help build and rebuild our Acolyte ministry, write that word Acolyte on your Connect card. Uh, the second is I wanted to give you an opportunity for extravagant generosity. Uh, the Northern Virginia District of the United Methodist Church is working to raise funds for a handicap accessible van for a family in Centerville, Virginia. Uh, I've known about this opportunity and the Northern Virginia District has said, we're gonna do it. And so the district office has pledged $12,000 to this end. The total project is $40,000. I want you to know that Grace has already pledged $5,000 from our Caring and Sharing Fund. Uh, and we're looking forward to being able to make that gift thanks to your generosity. But if you'd like to make that happen, uh, when you give an offering today, I invite you to consider giving an additional offering and marking it for the Caring and Sharing Fund. Because uh, that's really in, in keeping with our values of becoming a more accessible church and advocating for people with disabilities. So we are going to give $5,000. If you would like to give an additional gift today uh, to that end, you're welcome to, and give that to the Caring and Sharing Fund. The reason I say additional offering is because uh, in the summer months, sometimes giving slows down, and we want you to know that we are behind for the year. That's pretty normal at a church like ours, uh, but we want you to be aware of that so that you know that your regular giving helps us continue to sustain our mission and ministry all year long. Uh, and if, if you continue to give, that'll help us out a lot. You can even consider giving more in the summer months when some folks are on vacation. You can say, I've got their gift covered and make that offering so that we can sustain our ministry through the summer and start the fall in great shape. The last thing I wanted to mention is uh, because we're doing it through the online connect, I wanted to mention all that because we're doing it through the connect card. Um, I also wanted to be able to acknowledge the news that is on everybody's mind, that our former president, Donald Trump, was injured as a victim of gun violence yesterday, and invite you to join me in praying for all those that are affected. Pray for Mr. Trump's healing, for the families that are affected, and continue to pray for our country, that the grace of God and the community that we have in the church can influence the way that we act as a country that we might have peace among us, even among people that are different, and especially in our political process, which can be so rife with tension and anxiety and animosity. We pray for the healing of our nation and that we might be a part of that healing as a church. So let us pray. <clears throat> oh Lord, our God, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you this day and grant that we may know and understand what you have done for us, and therefore we may know and understand what things we ought to do for one another. Grant that we may have grace and power to accomplish these things faithfully and to be agents of your grace in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our worship continues now with our children's moment, so we invite the children of the church to come forward at this time. As they're coming forward, I'll mention that after the children's moment, the kids are invited to go to Pop Out Church, where they will continue their worship, and they'll hear a message that offers the same gospel at a different vocabulary level. Come on down. Great to see everybody. We got a big crew in the back. You guys coming forward? You're welcome to. Come on down. We're very glad to see you. Hi, everybody. My name is Pastor Drew. Can you say hi, Pastor Drew? Hi. You sound a little sleepy today, but that's okay. We're glad you're here. Oh, there was an energetic one. Thank you. I have a question. Does anybody know what the word adoption means? What's the word adoption mean? Yes. Yeah, good, to take ownership of something or take care of it. What else do you know about the word adoption? Yes.
Yeah, sometimes when there's pets that don't have a family, we adopt the pet and care for it in our family. Good. Yes, what do you know about adoption? Yeah. Yeah, for a stray cat. Even though it's not your cat, you want to take care of it. That's right. Did you guys know that people can get adopted too? Yeah. Do you know anybody who's adopted or is there any adoption in your family? Have you ever heard, have, have met somebody that was adopted? Huh? Stella is? Good. Yeah. Yeah. You were in a Girl Scout troop with two twins that were adopted? Yeah. In your family, you have cousins that are adopted? Cool. Yes? And you have a friend named Ashley who's adopted. That's great. Do you, anybody know how many kids I have? How many do I have? Three. That's right. How many of them are adopted? Do you know? Two. Two. Miriam and Joshua are both adopted. And the reason I talk about adoption today is because I think it's a really cool thing. Because part of adoption, especially with kids, means that we live in a world where we want every kid to have a family that can take care of them. And so we practice adoption. Now in our family, we just really wanted kids. So we had to wait until there was somebody out there who said, you can raise our kids and bring them into your family. And we were so grateful. One thing you're gonna learn about in Pop Out Church today is that adoption is one thing that the Bible says is kind of what God has done for us. Just like you would adopt a pet or a child or a responsibility, God has adopted us and said, you are mine and I will take care of you. You're going to learn more about that in Pop Out Church, but I wanted to make sure you had a chance to learn about it first from me. Let's say a prayer. Can you show me your praying hands? And you can repeat after me. Dear God, Thank you for the ministry of adoption and calling us your children. Amen. All right. Thanks, everybody. If you want to go to Pop Out Church, you can go with Miss Allison right that way, and we'll bring you back in before the end of the service. Simon, do you want to go? Are you going to sit there? Are you going to sit there for a minute? That's fine. Our worship continues with an offering of music. This is a good time to fill out your connect cards and otherwise continue to center our hearts for worship. Worship continues now with the reading of scripture. Cindy Hardy is our scripture reader today. I invite you to stand as you are able as she comes forward and prepare your hearts for scripture. A reading from the, from the, saint, from the saint letters of the Ephesians. Listen for the word of the Lord. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us 
in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to be the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed onto us in the, in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ. As the plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things of, of, of earth, in Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having bestowed according to his purpose of him, who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who are the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were marked with the seal and the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards the redemption of God's own people, to praise of his glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you. So today we are starting a new sermon series, kind of the second half of summer series, and it's in the book of Ephesians. I mentioned last week it's one of my favorites. Uh, it's one of the richest texts in the New Testament. Um, and I just want to notice with you that um, after the shooting yesterday, Ephesians is a really good book to read. Because uh, part of what that will mean is that we will be drawn to watch all the news and notice all of the division that's happening in our country right now. And part of what Ephesians focuses on is actually our unity in Christ. Now that is Paul's letter to the church, not the nation. There's, they're two different things. But our focus on our unity in Christ can minister to us in the midst of a divided nation. And so um, in the days ahead, I wanna encourage you as one of your pastors um, to just be mindful of your news intake. Because part of what the news wants you to do is never stop watching and never stop being frustrated. And part of consuming a lot of that, it will start to change how you see your neighbor. And so in the days ahead, all the way through election season, I wanna invite you from time to time, turn off the news. And if you need an activity to do instead, read Ephesians and notice the degree to which, even in a divided world, God has called all of us one. All of us one in Christ Jesus. And our oneness is a gift from God, which God offers to us for the sake of the whole world. So I just wanted to offer that word briefly. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds to receive your word. Your word written in the scriptures, your word proclaimed in the church, your word made flesh in Jesus Christ. Amen. Destined for adoption. Did you hear that? How many of you are adopted or have adoption in your family? Yeah, it's always more than we realize. We have it in our family. Check out my three. They're adorable. Sometimes. Now, Looking at this picture, can you guess which of the children shares my DNA <laughs> and which two are adopted? <laughs> Sometimes when you line them up, it's a little obvious. We are a proud adoptive family. But it's sometimes funny the pe things people can say when they find out about it. Often folks will say, oh, that's so wonderful. You're such wonderful people for doing that, which is lovely to hear, but that's not why we adopted them. We adopted these two kids 
for selfish reasons. We wanted kids. And that was one of the only ways we were going to have them. We wanted four. It's their birth parents who were so generous that after we adopted two kids, they were so generous, in fact, that after we adopted kids two and three, we decided, you know what, three's enough. <laughs> That'll do. In our adoption process, in our adoption education, one of the things that we were told to expect is to start to notice just how many stories out there that we read to our children, or even like musicals and movies, how many of those stories are adoption stories? Classics like Annie, The Sound of Music, Stuart Little, they're all adoption stories. Disney movies like The Jungle Book, Hercules, even Christmas movies like Elf, a personal favorite. They're all adoption stories. The Bible has them too, of course. Moses was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter, his own mother preserving his life, and the story of God's people in offering him up. Hannah's son, Samuel, was adopted by Eli in the temple. And in a sense, Jesus is Joseph's own adoptive son. But twice in the New Testament, once in Romans, and then again here at the start of Ephesians, St. Paul likens the whole work of God in redeeming the world as an adoption story. The story of God adopting us, bringing us into God's own family, teaching us to regard one another as siblings, children of our heavenly adoptive parent. And there's another layer to this when Paul uses the language of adoption. In Paul's day, adoption was really only legally required when someone outside the family was to be named the heir of the father's inheritance. You can imagine the scenario. If a father has a son, a natural biological heir, and then the son of the father dies, the father, for the sake of the family's legacy, must name a new heir adopt someone to inherit the family's riches and the family's legacy. And so Paul writes, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing and has destined us for adoption as God's children. Through Jesus Christ, we have obtained an inheritance, our redemption, the forgiveness of sins, life in his name. All of this and more, God has pledged and lavished upon us through adoption as our own inheritance. He says, all of this has been done through the promise of the Holy Spirit, through the seal of the Holy Spirit. It is this passage and others like it that inform the church's tradition of, at baptism, of sealing the baptized with oil in the shape of the cross and saying, Hannah, Miriam, Joshua, whoever you are, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as God's own forever. For a long time in our culture, adoption was somewhat taboo. There was shame and stigma attached both to a couple's inability to conceive and to couples conceiving out of wedlock. So no one talked about it much. Some children didn't learn of their adoption until very late in life, which caused them not a little of trauma. Some birth parents felt more shame than pride for placing their children in adoptive families. These days, the recommendation is that adoption stories be shared openly, early, and often that there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's beautiful. We can even say it is divine. The adoption stories in our family are beautiful and also relatively uneventful, except for when I got the news late one night in my office here that Joshua was born, and I raced home so fast that I broke my bicycle. <laughs> Other families' adoption stories are more difficult, complicated. I have a friend named James who has adopted two sons. The second one was adopted after being placed previously in three other homes. 
He was still quite young, but old enough to have felt the rupture which, with each of those families. James and his wife were encouraged to find ways to form strong attachments with their newest son. We are learning that this is very important for all adoptive families. Indeed, all families, period. But in families with difficult or painful adoption stories, this is essential for the child's well-being to form attachments to their adoptive parents. And so for an entire year, 365 nights, every night, either James or his wife would sleep in the same bed as their son. And as he was falling asleep, and then long after he was already sleeping, they would whisper to him, I'm not going to give you away. I love you. I'm not going to leave you. I am yours, and you are mine. That son's name is Gabriel, and he just graduated high school. He shares the name of the one who bore the good news to Mary about Jesus. St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, which we're reading for this second half of the summer, it's different than some of the other New Testament letters. It's not really written to one specific church. It is thought that after a while, copies of all of Paul's letters started to be copied and put into anthologies. And Ephesians is kind of like a summary letter written by the students of Paul to summarize the good news about Jesus so that it can be read broadly. The implication here is that if you've never heard about what God has done in Jesus Christ, you should read this. In this letter, Paul will go to great lengths in rich prose and moving poetry to try and put into words what God has done so that those who read these words may come to know the height and depth and length and breadth of the love of God and confidently, confidently live in the light of this good news. And what's one of the first words that the letter employs, one of its first and chief images? It's that of adoption. That means that the life of faith, your life of faith, can and should be understood as an adoption story. That means hear the good news, you are adopted. A son has died, and in the light of his resurrection, the inheritance which belongs to him has been passed on to you. All of the riches of God are yours by right, because you are adopted. Whatever your story has been to this point, whatever lies ahead, you are invited this day to believe in your adoption and to receive Almighty God's divine parental attachment to you. Here, in oil, in bread, in water, in wine, and in word, hear the voice of God repeated to you week after week, day after day, whispering into your drowsy little ears, I am not going to give you away. I love you. I am not going to leave. I am yours. And you are mine. It is by this word that God intends to convince you that you are indeed God's very own. It is by this word that God intends for you to inherit what it means to live in the family of God. It is by this word that God intends to lavish upon you the gift of a life you would otherwise never have had. A life marked by the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, the ministry of reconciliation and adoption, the family tradition of giving yourself for others and in regarding yourself and all others as fellow children of God, which is life everlasting. It is by this word that God intends and indeed promises 
to adopt and redeem not just your life, but the life of the whole world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our worship continues now with a time that we call Living Thanks. This is a chance to give thanks to God for this good news and to ask for the faith to believe it. It's also a time when if you feel led, you can place your connect cards and any gifts you brought with you in the baskets at the back or the front. You're also welcome to come and kneel here and pray. Pray for that attachment which God has promised or just give thanks for the attachment which God has already accomplished in your life. As adopted and beloved children of God, let us live out our thanks.
Trusting in God's grace, our worship continues now with a time of prayer on behalf of the church and the world. As we pray, you're welcome to mention your own prayers aloud or in silence. And then when I say the words, Lord, in your mercy, you're invited to respond with the words, hear our prayer. Let's try that. Lord, in your mercy. Together, let us pray for the church and the world. Almighty God, as your adoptive children, siblings one and all, we pray together for the nations and peoples of the world and their leaders, for all nations anywhere in the midst of strife, and for our nation in the wake of a rupture in the fabric of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for the concerns of this local community, those we encounter in our daily lives and work, those who support this community in ways that are visible and invisible. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for those who suffer and those in trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for our friends, our enemies, our families, and especially for those adoptive families, for birth parents, adoptive parents, and adopted children throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for our own needs, which we bring to you, O God, naming them aloud and in the silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for the forgiveness of our sin and the sins of the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sin through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. All this we pray in the name of Christ, who teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the good news. The Lord is faithful and true slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. In the name of Jesus Christ, your prayers are heard and your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. We invite you to stand as you are able and join in singing our closing worship song. but 
children of God, we are truly thankful you were able to join us for worship today. Again, especially if it was your first time worshiping with us, we are glad you were led to grace, and we hope that that's exactly what you found here. We want to make sure to mention a few ways you can remain engaged with grace in the days ahead, and so here are a few of those. One of those is you can join our book club. We're meeting this Wednesday night at 7.30 in person and on Zoom, uh, having hopefully read uh, a book together that's called uh, Theology in Outline. It's about just over 100 pages, so if you start now, you could probably get it done. Uh, but just a reminder, that's happening on Wednesday night. And then on Thursday night, we want to invite everybody to meet us at Nathan's for ice cream starting at 5 o'clock. Uh, we are excited about that. That is a change in plans. We were going to go bowling, and then uh, a couple things changed, and we decided ice cream's the way. So we'll meet you on Thursday evening at Nathan's Dairy Bar and hope that you can join us there. A third is our English as a Second Language class is one of the strongest and most significant community ministries of our church. Uh, and they've set up a table in the back so that you can visit them and learn about that ministry and learn about what it would mean for you to participate. It's one of the uh, most broadly volunteered for ministries in the church. Uh, and if you're new to Grace or feeling called to serve in some way, we invite you to stop by the table and learn more in case God has brought you here so that you can serve in that way. Lastly, after worship, we want you to um, stick around for coffee hour, enjoy some snacks, and then join us in the fellowship hall for our all ages, all abilities summer Sunday school class. It's all of us together in the fellowship hall, and today I get to lead and we have snacks. So, uh, so get your first round of snacks up here and then the second round in our Sunday school class. Now receive this final benediction. Go from this place trusting in the grace of God and the good news of your adoption. And regard the rest of the world too as God's adopted world, God's adopted children. And trust that with God's grace, we will and can live as one family, serving one Lord. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am children.